his years at Red Sucker Lake, his years in the Legislative Assembly, and of course of his participation in the effort on behalf of many Canadians to end the Meech Lake Accord. He was also very effective in moving forward the agenda for better understanding of Aboriginal people in Canada and for the coexistence of Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people in our country. In December 1995, Elijah was instrumental in convening a sacred assembly. Elijah's father, Pastor Alan B. Harper, gave the opening prayer. At the front of the assembly on the stage, Elijah Harper and his father stood together with Grand Chief Ovid Mercury, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, and the Minister of Indian Affairs, Ron Irwin. Elijah chaired the assembly and he provided the keynote address. I'm going to quote from Elijah Harper's speech because it tells much about Elijah and his vision. Elijah Harper said, and I quote, I have a vision for this country we call Canada. This is a vision that is inherent in the treaties that were made with the newcomers that came to this land and with their governments. We agreed to respect and honor each other, to coexist, to live side by side in harmony, to share what we have, the knowledge, the land, and the resources. This vision is not very complicated, but it is strong. It embraces unity, caring, loving, and sharing. But it has not been appreciated and understood by many ordinary Canadians. Elijah then went on to talk of the responsibilities of Aboriginal people to maintain their language and culture and to maintain their stewardship of the land and the environment. He continued in his speech, and again I quote, We understand the need to use the land for the benefit of everybody, not for greed. It is important that all Canadians understand and appreciate this, that our relationship with this land is a responsibility that is not within our power to extinguish. I believe there is something missing, which is the spiritual element. Thus came the idea of the sacred assembly to bring, bring spiritual leaders together, to bring understanding among our communities and the whole country of Canada. There needs to be a healing in the land and in the people. There needs to be reconciliation, restoration, and restitution. Because of our relationship with the Creator and this land, this is a spiritual process, a sacred process, and this is the reason why we have called a sacred assembly. A nation without a vision has no hope. A nation without a vision has no future. We now embark on, embark on this journey together for the benefit of all people here in Canada. And that was how he ended it, with his vision of uh, Canada. Uh, and uh, one can see how his words then foreshadowed what was to become the Reconciliation Commission. Uh, it foreshadowed uh, many things that have passed since then. Now, one of the recommendations which came from the Sacred Assembly was for a national day to recognize Aboriginal people and their contribution to Canada. And thus it was that Elijah played an important role in the establishment of the National Aboriginal Day on June 21st. National Aboriginal Day is an important step in creating better awareness and understanding of the history of Aboriginal people in Canada and a better future for all of us. The first National Aboriginal Day occurred in 1996, six months after the Sacred Assembly. And it has, of course, been held every year since then. And I believe it has contributed to a growing sense of pride among Aboriginal people in Canada and a growing improvement in the understanding of all Canadians in the role Aboriginal people have played in our province and our country. Elijah Harper also played a key role in the discussions which led to the Framework Agreement on Self-Government with the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. 
Indeed, I believe Elijah Harper would have been very pleased were he alive today to learn of the amount of work and progress being made with respect to self-government for the Sioux Valley Dakota First Nation. Such self-government should be fully achieved by July of this year. In the years after his time as a member of parliament, Elijah Harper continued to be active in working with others for the benefit of Aboriginal people in Canada. He always sought ways to bring development that would strengthen Aboriginal people, and part of his effort was in seeking a way to get benefits to communities on the east side of Lake Winnipeg, including his own community of Red Sucker Lake. There remains, of course, much left to do, and much left to be done as we move forward in the years ahead. Today, as we honor Elijah Harper in his achievements, we think of what he has done. We think of his contributions. We think of even as toward the end, Elijah struggled with diabetes. He continued to contribute. He continued to travel across Canada and to travel around the world. And of course, that rampant epidemic of type 2 diabetes is a scourge that we must dedicate ourselves to ending. But I want to conclude by saying, on behalf of Rana Bokeri and the Manitoba Liberal Party, I want to extend condolences to Elizabeth, to Anita, to the extended family and community members and to the many, many friends of Elijah Harper. Mr. Speaker, uh, I close with those words and thank you for the opportunity for being able to contribute a little bit uh, to this discussion today.